One of the core effects in Mamba is the colour corrector that is taken straight out of the Mystica post-production system. So it's a fully featured colour corrector in its own right. But we can use it inside our composites at any level. The colour corrector has unlimited layers of colour correction and its default name for a layer of colour correction is a vector. But by double clicking on these we can change them to whatever we want them to be. We can add extra layers here and we'll look at that shortly. The colour corrector itself is divided into different sections. We looked briefly at the select area when we looked at keying and we'll come back to look at that in more detail. But the principal tools of the colour corrector are laid out on these tabs, primary, bands, fixed vectors and curves. So in its default setting any change we make to these controls will affect the entire image. So firstly let's look at the primaries tab. For anyone used to a colour grading layout you'll be used to the three ball system where there's a ring which is controllable by dragging the right button and that changes the luminance of that particular range of the image. Then there's a ball which we drag with the left mouse which changes the colour. So this ball and ring influences the darkest part of the image and this the midtones and this the highlights. We have a numerical readout here and here and that's just to help us see if there's a very small shift in colour which we might not be able to detect if we're just looking at the ball itself. We can reset the ball and the ring separately with these two buttons. Over here we have a pick black and pick white function. What they'll do is if we select one of these functions and pick on the image. Depending on which one we pick, Mamba will make the necessary changes to the relevant ball and ring in order to make whichever pixel we picked to be exactly black or exactly white. So for example if I were to pick in here we can see that Mamba has dropped the luminance level by adjusting the luminance ring and it's also made a color offset. So now the pixel we picked is exactly black. Likewise, if we pick white, Mamba has made an adjustment on the outer ring to bring the brightness up and made a slight offset in the color to make that pixel exactly white. So this is quite a good way of getting a neutral image before we start. I'm just going to clear by selecting my folder and hitting delete, which clears every single value. We can also use pick black and pick white in areas that aren't necessarily, from a luminance point of view, either black or white. For example, if I control and right click on the screen, you can see we get a little color reader come up. And we can see from this piece of tarmac that we'd expect to be gray, actually shows the whole image has a slight red bias. We can see this 0.33 red. Now if we picked black in there, we can obviously see that Mamba has been made to make quite a drastic adjustment to make that pixel black. But if we were to remove the settings that it's given for the luminance ring, we can see that that leaves us just the color change that it made, which has now taken out that red bias. At any point we can toggle on and off our color correction using the mute function here to see what changes we've made. This mute does the whole layer, so we'll mute the effect of all the tools on that particular layer. Alternatively, there's also an individual mute here just for the changes that we made in primaries. The other area in primaries are what's called printer lights, which is related to an older way of dictating color changes by giving instructions to film labs. But essentially by clicking on these we can add or remove an amount or a point of a particular color. So for example clicking on red, see I'm adding red into the image for each click or taking it away again and how much I add is either one, a half or a quarter point. So putting it onto a quarter obviously makes the adjustment a lot finer. So that's the same for all the colors and also overall. We can also choose how those points are added. At the moment with B+, plus, W+, plus, black and white, when I click one of these buttons both the black level and the white level are being lifted at the same time. Alternatively I could just apply my change in the blacks or just in the whites or as a contra move between the two. So where I add a click, blacks will go down, whites will go up. In other words, it will add contrast in that particular color. If I pull up a scope and we'll have it on the RGB waveform, we can see more clearly how these are working. 
So for example, clicking the red channel, we can see the whole red channel is being offset because we're on this setting. Alternatively, that's just changing the black areas or just the white areas or contrast between the two. The area beneath each of these are sliders, so these don't respond to these particular settings because level will always be an offset on the channel, so I'm just clicking and dragging. Then contrast, as you'd expect, is bringing the black and whites further, closer together. If we move to bands, we can see we actually now get five balls instead of the three. And in essence, we still have something for the blacks, the midtones, and the whites, but we also have an intermediate ball. So this gives us a bit more control over the range within the image of the shot. There's a slight difference to how the luminance rings work in bands compared to how they work in primaries. In primaries, as we increase, the saturation of our colours follow. In bands, when we increase, the saturation remains the same. Having the extra ball allows us to do things like bring in the feeling of more contrast without crushing the black so much that we lose detail. Or at the other end of the scale, bring in brightness whilst being able to maintain highlight detail. Underneath the balls, we have controls for hue, saturation and contrast. And in fact, then they're repeated. So in this panel, the control acts over the whole range of the image. Whereas in this panel, it'll only deal with the low light areas. So for example, to increase the saturation of the darkest colors and the same for the midtones and the same for the highlights. The ranges allows us to specify exactly where these balls work in the luminance scale of our image. If I click and drag these out, essentially what this graph is telling us is that this is black and this is white. So the black ball will work in the range that starts here and ends there. And then the shadows ball will work in the range that starts there and ends at this first crossover, then the mids, then the highlights, and then the whites. So if we want to, we can redefine exactly where those balls work within the range. However, you might find that you really need to adjust these because a normal workflow would be to set in primaries the full range of your image. So in fact, bands will then be working where you'd expect them to be. The next thing to look at is fixed vectors. Essentially what we have is a panel of our primary and complementary colors repeated three times. So red, yellow, green, cyan, blue, magenta. So in the first panel, we're deciding exactly what color that is. So you can see on the screen as I slide this up and down, whatever was considered yellow is now being redefined. Or on the next panel, this is changing the saturation of that color. Or on the next panel, it's changing the lightness of that color. And because it's doing this with vectors rather than keying, the edges are very, very clean. The final tool is curves, which itself is a multi-level interface. And those different levels are accessed along here. So at the moment, we have the RGB curves up. So they are essentially profiles to translate the incoming image to an outcoming image via a curve. By default, gang is on, which means that if I make any change in any individual one of these curves, they'll all follow. So I'm going to turn that off. And the important thing to recognize is that this bar, unlike the key graph display, this doesn't represent time. This represents, in this case, incoming level of the red channel. So to add a point, I can just hold down Alt and click. And now that can give me a control to change the profile of the curve. There are some controls here to help us. Pressing low shows us the bottom part of the curve for fine detail or high and the constraint as well so that we can ensure that we're only moving in one axis. We can also change the style of our key points just like we can in a graph. So they're on smooth at the moment, they could be on sharp, they could have connected tangents or broken tangents. And we can reset our graphs down here. So on this tab we have curves for red, green and blue. On the next one we have three different graphs. So this first one is luminance to luminance. So this allows us to enter a profile to change how the luminance is transformed. So for example if I did something like this what we'd be saying is that 
when the incoming luminance is at 41%, it needs to be transformed out to 70%. So that's why you can see the lift. So that's only acting in the luminance channel. It's not affecting the saturation. The next one along is saturation to saturation. So what this is saying is, depending on the incoming saturation level, what to do with it. At the moment, it's left alone. It's left as 100% of whatever the incoming was. But something like this would actually say that if the incoming pixel is low in saturation, leave it alone. And if it's high in saturation, then reduce it. And this one is luminance to saturation, something similar to the previous one, but based on luminance. So the same graph in here would say that dark pixels don't have their saturation changed, but light pixels have their saturation reduced. Then the next one along is hue to hue. So this allows us to rotate the hue in a particular area. Now we can either find our color manually, or we can use one of the picks. You see there's three varieties. Pick zero allows us to find on the graph the color that we've picked, but not insert a point. Whereas with pick one, Mamba will insert a point for us. However, a single point is really that useful because of course, if I pull this, I'm pulling the whole graph. So the whole image is, is having a hue rotation. So pick three gives us two arbitrary other points in order to restrict our change to the color that we've picked. Now this is a wraparound display, so you can see that the other point is actually at this end of the display. Obviously, as you know, the hue is a circular thing. So with three points, it allows me to make a change just to the color that I've picked, plus a certain amount of fall off, which of course I can change by moving these around. Then the same way we have hue to saturation, so we can pick a particular color and say that that is more or less saturated, and hue to luma, so we can pick a particular color and say that should be lighter or darker.